Our final lesson in the SharePoint chapter is going to be about navigation and changing your site theme. We've done a lot of the, the specific tools, the document libraries, the list, different web parts on pages and news, and we've seen how to do some content roll up. So now that we've got a handle on some of the basics of building out a SharePoint site, we need to kind of put some polish on it. And what I mean by that is that we can change the navigation on our site so that we can have a large mega menu such as this on a communication site perhaps. Um, or maybe we want to go over to a team site such as our Marquette project team and change our left hand navigation. So in either case, whether the menu is at the top or on the left, I just look for the word edit. Now you do need to be a site member to be able to do this uh, or you won't see the word edit. But as long as you are, you just click on edit. And then let's say operation analytics, we want to move up. For each link you see on your left hand navigation on a team site type, you can move up or make sublink. So let's move that up a couple times. And then let's say we want to organize these a little bit. So we do have documents already, which would take our users to our main document library, but maybe design guidelines is also seen as documents. So maybe I actually want to move that up. And then I want to make that a sublink of documents. So it kind of rolls up into documents, even if they're not part of the same library or anything, it's just documents is my general library, the most, uh, the broad audience, right? And then design guidelines is maybe a separate library that's also documents, but more of a, a smaller audience. So let's also go ahead and make areas of focus a sublink and operations analytics a sublink, and we can see what that does. Now before I click save, if you want to remove a link, it's the same ellipsis, and then remove. Okay, and if you want to change what something links to, let's say you updated a link to a resource, you just click on edit, and then put the new link in the address box. Or if you want to change what it says, just change the display name and click OK. All right, and if you want to add one, click on the plus sign, same thing, link, put the address, put a display name. So maybe I want this to be natethetrainer.com and display name is natethetrainer and OK. All right, so I've got that on there. Um, I could delete if I wanted to. I've reorganized a little bit and I'm pretty much done. So I'll go ahead and click on save. And now I can see my documents roll up, saved me a little bit of space. So if your left hand navigation is getting a little busy, you might consider arranging those in alphabetical order. You might consider using groupings like this so people can expand and collapse specific areas. Okay. And then if you want to kind of add a supplemental navigation to a team site, you might consider adding a quick links web part like we've seen earlier in this uh, chapter. And you could put that somewhere, you know, on the top of your page or on the right column, uh, just for additional resources that maybe aren't specific to this site. So before we finish this uh, lesson, let's go ahead and look at a um, communication site as well. So here we are in the landing, which is the organizational intranet. And because it's a communication site, it's navigations at the top. So once again, I'll just click edit up there since I have sufficient privileges and notice it opens up the same left hand uh, panel up here. Okay. And I get the same options. I can move up, move down, uh, promote a sublink, which is the reverse of making a sublink, remove and edit. Now, one different thing in a communication site is in addition to being able to create links, you can create labels, which don't link to anything. You can click them and they don't go anywhere. Um, but basically you could say list could be um, a label and then you put all your lists under it and you can create one for documents that's not clickable and then put all your document libraries underneath it. Um, so currently that's not part of a, a team site option, um, but we can do that here to get this nice uh, kind of mega menu with these categories that aren't clickable. All right, and then one last thing. In this uh, particular course, we're not learning about hub sites, but I do want to show you if you do see something a little bit different on your SharePoint environment, it could be that you're using hub sites. And hub sites are basically kind of like a top level site that have associated sites uh, that share a top nav bar. So if you do have a hub site, just go to that top level a site, in this case, global sales, click edit way up there. And then once again, it looks very similar. And the only big difference here is that any site that's associated to this hub will share this navigation. So you don't have to recreate it on each one. So for example, if I uh, cancel there and go to sales and marketing, that top navigation is still there. All right, so we've edited navigation uh, just real quick. We'll edit our site theme too. We'll just stay here on uh, sales and marketing. I want to show you what happens when you try to change the theme for a site that's associated to a hub. So remember, sales and marketing is associated with global sales. Now, when I go to the settings wheel and choose change the look for this, 
and I click on theme, notice it says your site is connected to global sales and is set to automatically adopt the same theme. Oh, okay, so my work is done for me. <laughs> so that one's easy. Uh, if you want to change global sales, do the same thing. So the actual hub that's going to push its theme down to all of its sites, settings wheel, and then change the look, theme, and then you can change your theme. Okay. And then let me show you on um, just a regular team site that's not associated with a hub, settings wheel, change the look, theme, and then I'm going to change to this blue theme, but I'm also going to customize the colors to match maybe, you know, specific branding or something that I want and save. All right. So I changed my theme. It was pretty painless, but notice when you do change that theme, it changes all of your accent colors. So buttons on your site, icons on your site, links, all of it's going to adopt that accent color. This concludes chapter two on SharePoint. I'll see you in the next chapter to learn about Microsoft Teams.